What's up guys, welcome back to another episode of Mind Something. If you're new here, my name is Jake, and in today's video, Radiance got some awesome news. I had some bad news, and I have some tips to share with you guys. So, you know the drill. Do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe if you haven't already, and we're just going to jump straight in and take a look at the market. So, I had Ergo's price pulled up first, so Ergo's sitting at $1.33, $1.34. And as you can see, you know, if if the previous market plays out similarly in this market, then perhaps we are pretty close to the bottom for Ergo. Next, let's take a look at Caspa. So Caspa took a little bit of a dip today, but it's already gained most of that back. We are currently sitting at 0 0.009 cents, and we got down to... I think 0 0.008 cents so we've already climbed up about 10 percent at the time of recording which is about nine o'clock on november 28 2022 and let's go ahead and take a look at the whole crypto market bitcoin's coming in at 16,274 and just barely hanging on to this level by a thread ethereum's also got a lot of sell pressure right now i don't know if you guys are aware but there is a huge uh, whale out there that's been dumping a lot of ETH on Binance. And then we've got XRP coming in at 38 cents, Cardano at 30 cents, Polygon at 83 cents, Dogecoin at 10 cents. Uh, let's take a look at Litecoin coming in at $75.53, uh, Monero $136, Toncoin $1.72. Yeah, so we're we're not doing great guys and you know considering the macroeconomic situation i i think we got further down to go uh, especially with everything that's going on in the ftx saga but you know time will tell you know if you look at all of the indicators it looks like we bottomed on most of these metrics already but you know we're in a different situation that we've been in in the past so be cautious um don't over leverage yourself and Best of luck to you, not financial advice, right? So what's the positive news for Radiant? I have got to share this. This is so bittersweet. So first of all, it's now listed on Trade Ogre if you guys weren't aware, which is awesome. But even more exciting than that, it is now on what to mine. That's right. If you didn't know, now you know. There it is. So I've got my farm numbers put in here, 22.7 giga hash at 2000 watts and it is showing a total of eight dollars and 89 cents a day in revenue and four dollars and nine cents a day after power and i thought it was interesting to compare that to minor stats uh, profitability calculator with the exact same numbers no pool fee no dev fee in there we're coming in at nine dollars and 37 cents in revenue and four dollars and 57 cents a day after power and this is both using 10 cents per kilowatt hour. So I'm, I'm interested to see which one of them is using the correct difficulty level. Anyways, also one other interesting thing that I thought I would share. Now, I know there's a lot of you out there that have been watching the channel for a while, but there's probably a lot of new people as well. And I've been talking about mining Radiant for months now, and I have been mining it for months. And... I'm really glad that I did, obviously, but check this out. If you were mining Radiant, let's say just one month ago, looking at October 27th, my farm was getting me 22,848 coins per day. And at this point, we're getting 8,172. So going back to this number here, Let's say, let's just say 23,000, make it a nice even number. So 23,000, sorry guys, I got a mouse that double clicks and I am stingy about buying another one because I've asked for one for Christmas. So that would be a good stocking stuffer. I'm trying to avoid purchasing one, but it's, it's getting quite old. Anyway, so current price of Radiant is, I think roughly 0 0.0012. So I was making, or yeah, I guess if I was mining a month ago, 
I was making $27.60 a day before power. And now we're down to about $9. So this shows you the importance of getting into a project as quickly as you can. You'd never know what's going to do well and what's not. Now, of course, you got to be careful for rug pulls. You know, you really got to dive into it, do your research, and you've got to study the Discord. And you guys have know that I, you know, we talked about Pink Chain being a rug pull or at least seeing a lot of red flags before that happens. So join the Discords, get in there and be active. If you really want to maximize your return, then that's just the legwork that you got to do. Now, I'll try and do as much of it for you as I can, but, you know, do your own research, right? Don't trust, verify. Anyway, so on to the bad news that I had for me personally. So usually once or twice a week, I'll travel for work. I go sometimes an hour and a half to two hours, depending on where I got to go. And this morning when I left, I hadn't taken a look at the rigs or checked on them until after I was on the road. And I was on the road for about 20 minutes and I pulled them up and sure enough, I had several rigs that were down and they were all of the rigs that were in my shop. And uh, for those of you that are new, in fact, I don't know if I've ever showed this to anybody, so this might be news to everybody, but this is my property here. Uh, this is my house and this is my shop. And as you can see, there is a substantial distance between my house and my shop. Uh, if, if this is a car here, that should give you some, some idea of scale but it's roughly about a thousand feet from the back of my house to the front of my shop here. And in order to get internet to this building, I, I did a Wi-Fi bridge. Now I'm familiar with this particular product because of what I do for a living. And for those of you who don't know, I'm basically part owner of an audio video security networking company. <clears throat> and I've installed this product several times let's say for example if we need a, a camera down by an automated gate or some type of gate entry or something like that or you know a, a detached shop if the distance is further than 300 feet then cat 6 or cat 5 is not going to get you there uh, so i had to have this wi-fi bridge and i basically got it mounted uh, about right here and there, there's two of them so one of the we'll call it satellites is about here and the other ones about here now you can see there's a pretty tall line of trees that kind of blocks this but i have them up high enough that they peek just slightly over the tree limb so i don't have to worry about too much interference and believe it or not i actually get about 75 percent of my throughput on a hardwired line which is <laughs> pretty substantial given the distance between the two uh, i think this thing can work up to like five kilometers in a clear line of sight if you line them up properly and it's really not hard to install it at all and i'm only bringing this up because a it was an issue and it makes for good content right now but also because i know a lot of people have their mining rigs in sheds or shops or a detached garage of some kind and obviously you don't want to have to pay for your internet service twice and if it's just not possible to get a cat six wire from your router to your detached building this this particular product is exactly what you need now when i bought this thing about a year ago it was almost half this price so unfortunately it's gone up quite a bit but i'll leave a link to this down in the description below and it, it will be an affiliate link so it doesn't cost you anything extra but uh, it does help the channel so if you guys are so inclined that would be awesome anyway so this is a ubiquity product it's called an nsm5 and uh, or a nano station depending on you know if you're familiar with these things or not anyway it, if you have just one it can work as a ap uh, but it's really designed to work in conjunction with another one so that you can create a wi-fi bridge and this product has been outstanding for me so far i've had it over a year and haven't had any issues with it but for some reason today it just stopped working uh, and unfortunately I wasn't going to turn the car around drive home and then spend another hour trying to figure this out I had to get on the road and I had to get to work so I basically didn't get to mine on those rigs at all today and I was burning power while they were idle but anyway 
I did get home, figured out what the issue, well, I didn't really figure out what the issue was actually. It just required a power cycle, but let me show you guys a little video here. So this is my back porch and you'll be able to see how I have this thing mounted. I basically just strapped it to a piece of PVC. So that's it right there. And uh, that's a piece of PVC. And we'll let the video play so you guys get an idea of of scale here on how far it is from the back of my house to this shop that I have back here. So just above these trees right here there's you can't see it from where I'm standing but that's where the other bridge is and it <laughs> it's almost perfect it, it goes underneath these tree limbs and just above these tree limbs so I've got a pretty clear line of sight. Anyways, that's that's my property there. Anyway, so let's move on and talk about some things that might help you guys. So uh, first of all, this is Coruscant, which is 6600s, 6, non-XTs. And as you can see, they're mining Caspa, getting about 280 mega hash at about 45 watts. And I could dial this in and probably get this down somewhere to around 35 watts. However, I just can't get it stable. And I just wanted to show to you guys that previously, if if I've shown this particular rig on the channel before mining Caspa, I was at only about 265 mega hash using SRB miner, but I did switch to LOL miner, and sure enough, I have increased the hash rate by uh, roughly about 20 mega hash per card and kept the power the same. Now, also, uh, you know, depending on how many videos you guys have seen, you may not have seen the video where I talked about uh, shaving some wattage on your uh, AMD cards with a particular command, which is this one right here, this MOTD. Basically, this command locks your or sets your P state and it, it reduces power consumption. Even when the cards are idle, uh, I was using about 25 to 30 watts per card whenever they weren't mining, but after using this command, that drops it down to like 4 or 5 watts per card. So like on a day like today, where I, I couldn't get back there and turn the rigs off, and I just couldn't reach them uh, remotely at all, that probably saved me a significant amount of power over the course of about 8 hours when I you know couldn't get to them physically. Um, I did notice on a couple other channels, like Red Panda Mining's channel, they're using this particular command, but you have to go in there and specify each device ID. And that's kind of a pain. Uh, this is courtesy of Iotapi, who is the pool operator for Viper.net. Um, let me show you his handle here. So if you guys aren't in the Discord, he's been extremely helpful. Uh, and if you guys have any questions about this particular command here, I'm sure he'll be able to answer it. Now, I'm going to show my ignorance. And for those of you guys who lean on me heavily uh, on figuring out how to get more efficient or which miners to use, please understand I am very inexperienced with commands. I don't know Linux very well. Um, I'm familiar with Windows, of course, and, you know, as far as GPU mining, I've only been doing this for maybe a year and a half or so. I have some ASIC miners that I've had for, oh gosh, probably five years, six years at this point. But GPU mining was pretty new to me, and I lean very heavily on you guys. Um, so for those of you out there that are watching the videos, I'm sure some of you are much more experienced in this stuff than I am, and you're you know, it's probably frustrating to watch somebody like me who's trying to educate other people on how to do all this stuff, but I'm extremely enthusiastic about it, and what I lack in knowledge, I make up for with that enthusiasm, I hope. So, also, one other thing that I want to share with you guys, this one is courtesy of Burnham, who shared this today, and... Let me just read off to, to you guys what this is, essentially. So here's something helpful for you all that me and my buddy Shrew just figured out. You can automate the DPM commands to execute on each reboot. So the command that I just showed you guys, if you needed to or if your rigs rebooted, you would have to 
launch this command again in order to save that extra power. However, if you can follow these steps, which I, I haven't done this yet, so bear with me. Uh, once I get this all figured out, I will show you guys step by step. But for those of you who are familiar with this, and you can figure this out, to automate the echo dpm command on reboot, you can add the echo dpm command to the file uh, in each minor folder in HiveOS. Add the echo dpm command as the second to the last line before the minor executable runs in each file for each rig and minor. Uh, it does not persist after the minor update, just FYI. So if you update your rig or you update your minor, you will have to do this again. Uh, he says, example, load Hive Shell or SSH into your rig, and then you're going to put in the following if you're using Team Red Miner, or if you're using LOL Miner, you'll use this. And then you're going to hit Control plus O, then Enter to save, and then Control X to exit. Note hash rate and wattage for rigs, reboot, verify that it worked. So, yeah, once once I get all this stuff figured out, for, like for him, I'm sure this is extremely simple and easy to do. For me, it's a first time. I want to make sure that I get it right and give you guys a proper tutorial. But for those of you out there who understand this, I'm sure you can implement that. And then you don't have to worry about, if your rig reboots, putting that command in again. Anyways, that's all I got for you guys on this video. I hope you enjoyed the content today. Do me a favor, hit the like and hit the subscribe on your way out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.